I think every runner has heard about altitude training or training at altitude to improve performance. But what about heat training? It's something that's a little less common, but I do see it being discussed more and more recently. Now, given that I live in Taipei, Taiwan, which is generally very hot, and currently I'm staying in Seattle, Washington, which is generally fairly mild, especially during the fall, it was an interesting opportunity for me to really do an experiment and see what sort of running performance changes or advantages or benefits do you get from training primarily in heat but then running or racing at cooler temperatures. Before I go into my data, let me just say, I have no certifications in this. I'm just a runner. I'm an inquisitive runner. I enjoy learning about this stuff and really experimenting with it to see are there advantages. And again, given that I live in a very hot climate and I'm currently training for the New York City Marathon in a very cool or mild climate, I thought this was just a really great opportunity to jump into this topic once and for all. When I'm talking about heat training, there's really two things here that are distinct. There's heat acclimation and then there's actual heat training. Heat acclimation is adjusting the body to the hotter environment. It is not the same as heat training. To get the most out of heat training, you need to acclimate the body to heat training and then you'll get the advantages of heat training. You need the minimum of a couple weeks of acclimation uh, for the body to adjust to the hotter temperatures. Once your body acclimates to the heat, then you can start heat training. Now, heat training is a type of performance optimization, which is really considered the same as altitude training. What it's doing is it's improving the capacity for oxygen transport in your blood by increasing red blood cell production. So it's getting a lot of the same benefits of training at altitude, which will trigger the same response in a different way. There's a bunch of videos that go into the science of what's actually happening in the body with the blood plasma and red blood cells and all that stuff. That's not my knowledge area. That's not something I really should be talking about, but I'll put a link in the description to a video that I think goes into depth around the science of what's happening to the body here. But for the sake of this video, really what you're looking at for heat training is is a minimum of at least five weeks. You want to spend at least five weeks heat training to get the maximum benefit of increasing those red blood cells that will help aid in oxygen transport through the body. And with improved oxygen transport, it just means you have better endurance. You, you can feel stronger. You can go longer at a certain rate than you could have without that sort of training. And I will say that I have seen significant differences from all of my time training in extreme heat to running in much cooler temperatures right now. Let's look at some data. Now, this I think paints a very clear picture. Now, I pulled this data from a bunch of random runs essentially to get an average about what I'm looking at here. We're looking at my easy pace, aerobic pace, and marathon pace. Easy pace is just that. It's easy, so it's about a minute per kilometer off my marathon pace, meaning I don't go faster than that. So generally that can be, that's 5.30 per kilometer, but I don't go faster than that when I'm doing easy running. Sometimes I'll do 6, 6.30. It's really whatever I need it to be. And generally I'm trying to do nose breathing as well when I'm doing easy running. Aerobic pace is about 30 seconds off of my marathon pace or my current race pace. Um, and that's just that good running that shouldn't be too strenuous, but you're working. But it's a workable level that you can hold and maintain for quite some time. And then marathon pace is exactly that. That's my, my pace that I want to be running at in the New York City Marathon, which currently is 430 per kilometer or about 715 per mile. Now, at the bottom, you can see my zones, my heart rate zones. Now, these are fairly old at this point. I did these back in New York City and training in New York City is fairly consistent. I never had any real issues with heart rate or, or extreme heart rate drift or anything because the climate in New York, while variable and there are seasons, it's generally pretty stable and it moves fairly slow. So the winters are cold, heats up for the summer, cools down for the winter, and it's a fairly uh, even process. Even the hottest hot of summers is nothing compared to just the normal uh, in Taipei, Taiwan. 
So I haven't been training by heart rate zones really in Taipei because I noticed as soon as I got there, my heart rates were just all over the map. And it really depended on hydration, on sleep, on recovery, on so many things. And the hotter temperatures really threw it out. So I didn't really look at them until recently because now the climate I'm in here in Seattle is more similar to New York City in this time of year, ultimately what I'll be racing in. So I pulled them out just to kind of have, you know, a frame of reference here. Now, the hot uh, runs are uh, basically I pulled, I looked at data from a few random runs in June and August uh, for these different paces. Generally, they were coming from uh, 10K efforts where I'm doing 10K easy. Uh, the marathon pace was generally pulled out of maybe a 15 to 20K run. Uh, where I'm doing like a 5k easy warm up, then I'll do like 5 to 10 of marathon pace, and then a 5k cool down. And the aerobic pace was sort of coming in between sets or, you know, some of my longer runs, long steady running, uh, I would do at the aerobic pace. So again, these are not specific runs, they're just sort of averages I pulled out, I, I looked at two or three different runs. I average them together, temperature, heart rate, and then I put an RPE for what I remember generally feeling around that time. So as you can see for the hot runs, easy pace, you know, generally June, I was running at about 32 degrees Celsius, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. August was about 34 degrees Celsius, 93 Fahrenheit. But the heart rate here is generally 134, 135, somewhere in the mid 130s, which if you look down at my zones, my zone two is 123 to about 153, which is a big range. But the sweet spot that I always used to try to stay in is about 135. I try not to go above 140, and that's really my sweet spot in zone two. And as you can see, easy pace in super hot temperatures, I am right there, which <laughs> isn't the best thing, really. And then from an RPE standpoint, that's my perceived effort. You know, generally these easy runs are yeah, the heart rate is sort of there, but they there's a little effort there. They're, they're definitely not strenuous, but they're not as easy as easy could be. Now, from an aerobic pace, you can see things start to ramp up pretty quick. Same temperatures, but now running at that slightly faster temperature or pace, you can see my heart rate's gone up. Now I am on the upper end of my zone too. Uh, you could even say if I redid my zones, I bet this probably would be the next zone anyway and the rpe here significantly increases meaning there's a lot more effort and my body is working a lot harder um, to run that pace and that pace should be something i can maintain for quite some time hours if i need to and then for marathon pace this is where really kind of the, the wheels fall off really when I'm running in these hot temperatures. You can see my HR at 169 in the 32 degrees C and then 174 in 34 degrees C. That is extreme. That's my zone four. That's, that is way past where I want to be to the point where I can't maintain that and I will blow up. Um, and you can see that from the RPE. These two runs or these sort of averages, specifically that one in August was a, a chain of a few runs that I did in August before uh, before I came here. That was August of this year. I remember that week and it was brutally hot. And I remember feeling like death at the end of every run. Like the, the effort that it took to do that pace was extreme. I was doing everything to hydrate. I was trying to sleep well. It just nothing helped. And I was, I felt like I was grinding myself into the ground because it was so hot, but that's where it is. I think that's a good benchmark. So if we go to the cold or the cool temperatures, and again, I have about three weeks now of running here in Seattle. What's interesting about the Seattle temperatures is they're very similar to what Taipei is like in the dead of winter. So January in Taipei is generally exactly the weather that I'm running in right now. It's always humid, same humidity as here, and it's generally cold weather, like dead of winter, cold winter in Taipei is generally about 10 degrees Celsius or about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about as cold as it ever gets. Maybe it'll get a little colder overnight, but generally when I go out to run, it's around 8 to 10 degrees Celsius. So 
not that cold compared to you know real winter in in you know say new york city but when i'm running in winter in taipei i've generally had a few months to sort of transition from the hot summer weather into that cooler uh weather i've had three or four months of transition this has been interesting because i've literally gone from running in extremely hot 34 degree weather in fact the last run that i did in taipei before i got on a plane to come here to seattle that morning it was 34 degrees it was extremely hot and i just did an easy 10k and it was brutal i came i flew to seattle the next day uh, i took the day off of the travel day off but then the day after that so literally about 48 hours after that last run in taipei now i'm out in 10 degrees celsius running and these random runs are really from the past couple of weeks of me just doing these paces, doing this work. And immediately you can see a huge difference. So for easy pace, you know, HR is 121, 123, 122. And then that last, uh, the last column in the table there, that was my last run. That was yesterday's run, actually. Um, and you can see HR wise, I'm not even in zone two yet doing the same amount of work. Um, and my RPE is, I mean, this just feels like I'm not even running. It feels extremely easy, which is kind of amazing, actually. That's how easy running should feel. It should not be strenuous. It should be something you could do literally all day if you had to. So with my aerobic pace, now this is where it starts to get interesting because if you look at the HR, 135, 137, 133 in my last one, that is still about where my easy pace was in the hot temperatures. And RPE is a generally around that, that period. And then for marathon pace, you know, my heart rate is, you know, 147, 152, 149, but the RPE is extremely low. It's even easier for me to maintain marathon pace in these cooler temperatures than it was for aerobic pace in the hot temperatures. And honestly, to be able to do marathon pace in zone two, in a, and granted, my zone two is, is barely large and I'm out of that sweet spot, but I'm still generally in zone two, that's pretty good. And I've noticed that running marathon pace or aerobic pace in these cooler temperatures feels very easy and very sustainable. So as I said, I have seen massive improvements here. I've seen massive changes. From the first run that I did, I felt changes. I felt like everything was easier. Everything felt faster. Maintaining my marathon pace, and even going faster than that, going into a half marathon to a 5K pace, feels very manageable. My heart rate's never really, since I've been here in Seattle, I haven't really pushed it above 170, which for me is pretty good because I'm used to seeing that all the time in Taipei. My wife even commented last week that when I would come home from some runs in Taipei, I would look like death. That's what she said. I would just look beat up. I'd look horrible. There would be some days I'd come back from a run, especially a hard workout, and I literally would just go in the shower. I wouldn't even take off my kit. Just go in the shower and just sit under the water because I couldn't move. I would be drinking water, sitting under the cold water shower because I was so overheated. I was so thirsty. I literally couldn't move. Coming home here in Seattle from even a hard workout, I did about a 20, 22K um, mix of marathon pace with half marathon pace and a little bit of easy warm up and cool down. My wife said I, I look totally normal. I'm drinking normally, I'm not beat up, um, I feel stronger. It's actually really nice. So is there an advantage to heat training? I'm gonna say yes, I'm feeling it, I'm seeing it in my numbers, the data that I showed you in this video, I think it paints a very clear picture. Now, does everyone benefit from this? I don't know. I don't actually even know what the right amount of time is to actually train in the heat where I was living in Taipei. I'm lucky because I've had a few years of it, but if I was gonna go travel there, I would say, again, uh, the experts are saying a minimum of five weeks, but I need another couple of weeks for acclimation. So you're looking at least two to three months. Um, I just got out of that in a super hot summer. So again, I think I got the advantages and I definitely see performance gains here. 
Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this type of content, consider subscribing because you see more content like this pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.